How are you doing? Thank you so much for all your positive reviews and views of the positional analysis videos so far. If you don't know what we're talking about, we've already done the hooker, we've already done the front row. The second row video is the one that I'm doing now. So the uh, as the years have gone on, people have started describing that as left edge and right edge. I'm going to talk about that evolution in a second. But very soon after this video, we're going to have the lock loose forward video as well. So keep an eye out for that over the Christmas 2022 period because I've got to be quite honest, TV's rubbish. Rugby league's not on the TV. I'd rather put some content out there for you um, so you can enjoy that when you've had enough of unwrapping presents and eating food and drinking. Now, second row position. Over the years, I know when I started playing, it was almost like the second rower was a big person who wasn't as big as a prop or a centre who, who wasn't as fast as the other centres. So you tended to be a slightly lighter, more mobile person who played in the second row of the scrum. We used to pack down in the second row. I, see, I still see this happening in the community game now, and that's fine. And the other thing is, when I started playing, and, and I guess when so many of you grew up and some of you are still doing it now, there was no requirement for you to stay on one side of the field or the other. You literally could just roam. You were a more mobile version of the prop, like I said. So that was how I originally thought of second rows when I was a kid. As I got older, as I played a more professional form of the game, I got told to stay on an edge. And that was a concept I really struggled with when I first had to do it because I got a lot of praise of supporters and coaches for my work rate and obviously if you're on one side of the field and the ball or play doesn't come towards you then you can't do much with the ball and you can't tackle much so I guess that's how the game has evolved a little bit or it certainly has from the amateur to the professional level and then the other factor that we have to bring into play now is that we do literally have some behemoths on the left and right edge of second row, uh, in the second row position. So somebody like David Fafita is a huge human being, but he's also quite fast. Uh, God rest his soul, but imagine Jonah Lomu in one of those edge positions rather than centre. I guess how I look at the second row position, and this will come out in the videos, is that I've got a left edge, I've got a middle, and I've got a right edge. And I think of my edges as attacking options. So if you imagine on each edge there should be one half or could be one half. I always say you, you can be fluid in your approach to this, but there is often one half. The second rower, the centre and the wing are their attacking options on that particular side with the full back chiming in, sometimes the lock. So I prefer to use my second rower as an attacking option. And it's no coincidence that in my teams, the second row, the left or the right edge, tends to be the highest try scorer in my team, believe it or not. So I actually see it as a real attacking threat. Got some clips to show you to prove this, but I want you to be patient with me in the early clips because I want you to look more at the positioning of who I believe, and I think we all agree, is one of the better second rowers out there now, Elliot Whitehead, who has played at the Canberra Raiders, but is also uh, an Englishman who had a great World Cup. So. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you can see the same thing as me or we are in some trouble. This is England versus Samoa. Now, you know that if there's no NRL footage in here, you know that I've either tried and been blocked by the NRL for doing it or I've decided not to do it. OK, so if you're ever wondering why there's certain things in here and certain things that aren't. This is England versus Samoa in the semi-final. England are the white team, of course, attacking right to left. Now. We look for Elliot Whitehead. This is Elliot Whitehead here. A rough rule of thumb for most edge forwards now, so your left or right edge, they tend not to go past the, the nearest post on their side of the field, both in attack and defence. And I'll tell you why that's important soon. What I want you to look at from Elliot Whitehead's perspective now, and this is Elliot Whitehead here, is the work he does off the ball. 
Okay, so this is a prop forward taking the ball in. Now, this at the bottom of the screen is Elliot Whitehead. I put it in slow motion. So he's coming to push through. So he was pushing through in support. Now watch his movement, the bottom right of the screen. And I don't know if you can see it because of my cursor, but he actually back pedals to go back into his edge. I will just re review that so you can, you can watch it in full. So he works back to his edge. And this is what a second rower is under pressure to do now. So you see Elliot, Elliot Whitehead is still on his left edge here, still well inside the post, right? Of course, we're looking at Elliot Whitehead, but there's a right side second rower too, and that's John Bateman, who's not a bad second rower too. He gets the ball. The problem with John Bateman there is his, his angle and his line of run wasn't great. So let's have a look again at that whole passage of play. And I hope that my cursor doesn't get in the way this time so you can see the whole thing. This should be better. OK, Elliot Whitehead, bottom right of the screen, coming in and coming out again. Just nat naturally, instinctively pulling away from the ball. The ball doesn't go in his direction. It instead goes to Bateman. Now, that line from John Bateman there, let's just have a play around with that line. I would say that's a bit more... Uh, They've overcrowded this right edge, basically. So they've got three on two. If they get the ball early to Bateman now and he goes straight, they've got a three on two on the Samoa defence. Instead, Bateman runs a sort of crash line and goes absolutely nowhere and attracts Luai into the tackle. And again, that's why the second rowing position is important because you'll see something that Elliot Whitehead does in the minute in a minute instinctively, and a guy called Steve Menzies used to do instinctively all the time, and I'll, I'll show you what that is. So the right edge at the minute of England is basically in tatters, and this is a really unorganised set from England where they just seem to be uh, scratching around trying to find something. Let's have a look at Elliot Whitehead's role again here. See how he pushes through, runs back quickly, And then he's part of the kick chase team. Now we are defending. Let's look at Elliot Whitehead and Bateman now, particularly Elliot Whitehead. As you can see, this is Elliot Whitehead. Watch again. And he's not gone past that post. Now, the importance of this is defensively, it means you've always got somebody responsible for a certain area. And quite often that edge defender can be the captain of that of that edge. The the second rower or the centre can be the captain of the of that defensive edge. The other thing though is from an attacking perspective, and I've actually I've actually paused the tape here, both in the recording that I put together, but also in what I'm doing now. Because this is Whitehead here. Sorry, not yeah, Whitehead. And this is always a good indication of how the defensive split for the opposition is going. So this is how the game has evolved a little bit. Quite often, attacking teams, if they see this edge defender too close to the middle of the field, i.e. past the post, so if you imagine the near post and a straight line to the opposite near post, Elliot Whitehead is on the borderline here, that will mean that the half is outside him, the centre is outside him, and the wing. And if that edge back rower comes in too much, that can be an indication to the attack that they should attack on that side because they've overloaded the other side. And let's just count numbers. I actually think the problem here is they've put too many on this side because we're going to have a wing over here somewhere, but they're so compressed together there that it's not obvious to Samoa because there's only four defenders there. So this is what a lot of teams look for. They look to see where the edge defenders are so they can decide their attacking structure. And there's the other man, Bateman, getting involved on the other side of the field. So let's watch the rest of things now. See how far Elliot is now. So this is a this is a real chance. So there's Whitehead. 
there's a real chance now for Samoa to get the ball down this side of the field because Whitehead is so far in in field and Samoa didn't capitalise on it. We're back in attack again and you'll see that Whitehead is very much on the left side of the field. Uh, That's Bateman there and I would argue, and I'm going to rewind this so you can see it again, he's not got his timing right today but What's good about somebody like Bateman is he can beat a man or two straight up. Because that's the other thing with the second row, where you want them to be good in tight spaces. And that's where Bateman in particular is very good. The ball's come back to the middle of the field, so we can predict, based on what we've studied so far, that Elliot Whitehead will be on the left of the field. And you will see here now that he's part of the kick chase team. So he knows his job and he's very focused on it and he's one of the first to get there. Obviously, one of the best ever exponents of the left edge is Steve Beaver Menzies. Now, here he is timing his run to perfection, but he actually gets caught by the Melbourne Storm defence. But the thing with the Beaver is he was also a weapon as well. Look how he timed his run there. Now, what I want to show you there from that, so two things. Number one, the Beaver here was virtually tackled. But he was so strong, and this is the other thing about second rowers, they need to be able to push people off. He pushed two men off there and then managed to step and go through two more. Here, he's seen that his attacking partner has gone a lot across his line. Now, this is a key thing I was trying to uh, hint at before. A good second rower knows if a half comes across them, they drop back inside. So the golden rule is if you're on a train track and a train comes across into your line, you go into theirs. It's exactly the same when you're playing on an edge. Look at the beaver do it here now with a plum and to perfection. One of the best second rowers I've coached at junior level is Adam Elliott, the Bulldogs, Raiders, and now Newcastle man in the power couple with Millie Boyle, who's also a damn good player. Old footage, but as you know, I'm restricted on some of the footage I can use at the minute. Look at Adam Elliott, number 11, blue headgear, pushing through and then just going back to his edge. And he's actually telling his edge what he wants from them. The ball went across and now it's coming back across. And there's Elliott still in position, just pushing through. And I compare this role a little bit. For those of you who like soccer, who like football, a forward, a striker, has to just keep turning up, to keep turning up, keep turning up to get their head or their foot on the ball, nine, ten crosses might come in. Nine of them, the striker might not get to, but the tenth one, they score, and then everybody likes that striker because the key thing is you keep turning up, you keep turning up, you keep turning up. In the second row, or on the edges, the ratio is a lot higher, particularly in rugby league, because have a look at how much, particularly in the NRL and Super League, the passes go long, long, short, and they try and do a crash ball. The second rower's trying to do a crash ball onto the into the defensive line. So your second rower really should be a really good strike weapon because they get an awful lot of ball. So here's Adam Elliott. Again, he's part of the kick chase. Now, here he is carrying the football just in a more basic way, just plus one. He was really good and really strong at that, got good go forward. And this is why a lot of them end up playing in the middle because they can end up, being one of the more powerful people in their team. You'll see the team was good at decision-making. They're now going to move the ball to the other side of the field. You'll see the right second rower gets involved. Again, bit like, bit like Bate, uh, Bateman before, getting the timing a little bit wrong and ends up just making uh, a steady carry. Here's Elliot again. Now, the difference with Elliot and, uh, and most good second rowers, now they make a good decision. So if you look at... Adam Elliott there and the decision he made. So, first of all, in the set, he's been heavily involved in a carry. So, first of all, he's done kick chase. Now he's been involved in a carry. I mean, that's as good as any prop, isn't it, or any middle. And this is a good team he's playing against with a lot of future NRL players. He now works back to his edge eventually. So, they have a crack at the left edge. When the ball eventually comes back, he's not chased the ball. He's stayed on his left edge. Our right edge gets his time in a little bit. Tyler, hope you're well, mate, if you, if you ever watch these things. 
It might have been better for him to scream on the inside, as I was discussing before. But you can bet your bottom dollar Adam Elliott is in position now. And he gets the ball. He gets a nice early ball. I seem to remember the team were under instruction to get good early ball to him. And this is why somebody like Adam Elliott is a really good football. And he gets wasted if he gets used as a battering ram a little bit. He's in a 3v2 position now, I think it is. And he simply makes the right decision. Because he's a good carrier of the football, he's attracted two defenders there. So he's been aware of that. And he's tipped the ball on to his centre, who's then tipped it onto his wing to score with millimetres to go. So as you can see, the second row, the left edge, the right edge, is now quite a nuanced position. Can you imagine how somebody like David Fafita is in so much demand? Because when he gets hold of the ball and carries it, good luck trying to stop him. I remember coaching the schoolboy game once, and it was the year that Kibra went on to great things. My Ipswich side scored 12. We played Kibra. David Fafita scored most of the 18. <laughs> so it was Ipswich 12, David Fafita 18. And that's how important the second row is. Keep an eye out for the lock video. If I don't speak to you before then, have a great Christmas. And 2023, we are going to have a belter. Take care.